Hey, I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab, and I'm here today at the Smart Energy Council's Conference and Expo in Sydney, and I'm here with Kenneth. Kenneth from Pixie. Now, Kenneth, um, welcome to Australia. Thank you very much. Uh, you're based in Norway, right? Yep, I'm and, based in also. And you're the CEO. Yes, you're I am. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say, yeah? Yeah, it's great, great to meet you. Thank you, same. Now, I've known about Pixie for quite a while. Some of our audience probably don't know, but I, I can link it up to this video uh, that we've already made about the unit that we're sitting next to. But basically, um, You've kind of got this amazing modular inverter system. That's true. That's true. We have a bidirectional 3.3 uh, kilowatt uh, inverter, which is used for various types of applications. It's a modular, scalable system suitable for many types of applications. And we have seen a great interest in our products. I've seen them in Melbourne being used in community battery. It's, yes, uh, I was there actually at, uh, at the launch. So. Oh, right. Yes. So you probably met Chris, who's a former student of mine, who facilitated the whole thing. Yeah. It, I love the way they've painted it too to make it very nice. Very rather nice. than a bit of engineering stuff sitting on the side of the road, it's, it's something beautiful too. Great, great. Uh, we are also working on that now to make it even more pleasant and even more, so to say, blending into the environment. So yeah. we're looking at various types of solutions oh, okay. uh, for both the, the application of uh, community power, but also towards other uh, other type of applications, EV charging, and, and also going towards more of the residential home type of solution. Yeah. Well, we were talking before off camera about kind of more of a big picture about what's happening with energy and trends. Yep. And uh, coming from Norway and the sort of European experience, yep. uh, what do you see? I guess we see a, there's a big mega trend happening globally with regards to elect electrification of transportation. And that goes not just on the standard EV for home and personal use, but there's a shift towards, uh, let's say, transportation as a whole. Uh, being bigger trucks, uh, local transportations within the cities, and uh, needing to go more electric. And we see great incentives starting now in Europe. They are, they are building a pan-European transportation network with chargings for, for trucks. And we see our solutions being a very good match to that because the distribution grid is not actually sized for fast charging, which is an expectation for, uh, for this to be successful. And, and our solution can actually multiply the available power and boost the power availability uh, in existing or weak grids, uh, allowing for acceleration of, of, of this trend. So where there's network constraints, you can solve those problems Absolutely. at a much lower cost than network upgrade. Yeah, and, and network, network upgrades or even to apply for a, a large uh, net, network connection these days can take, in some cases, two to three years. So. In some countries, it's not going to happen. Yeah, talking about Pixie solutions for network constraint, yeah. um, but also uh, applications from Pixie in the renewable space. So you've Absolutely. got, you've the, got C the CNI, CNI, CNI space. I mean, you've also got solar charging. Correct. Right. Correct. So you, you, your little box is everything. It's everything is a beauty, you know. It's uh, software configurable features that can go in there, uh, and you can set it up for any type of application with uh, DC coupled solar. Uh, with uh, bi-directional uh, AC inverter. You have a rectifier functionality that can be set. You have a traditional inverter as in a DC to AC configuration. And and you can also do DC to DC uh, as a bi-directional DC to DC component. So it opens up a very large range of applications where this standard product can fit into. You know, it might be easy to describe your product in the negative. What can't it do? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess where we differentiate is that we do not uh, support for time being a high voltage um, uh, kind of battery. We use 48 volt batteries and that's kind of to us uh, the beauty. Uh, it gives us a lot of advantages in terms of safety and applications uh, where it can be used. But we do see trends of uh, higher voltage batteries being requested for. And so we are, of course, looking into opportunities to, to upgrade the product to suit that as well. Right. So, I imagine certainly with the miniaturization, higher voltage would give some advantages of low current, small wires, you know? But still, it's low. We have short distances within mm. the cabinets. We are AC connected outside of the cabinet. Uh, so yeah. it's, we, we do see not many disadvantages with 48 volt, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I've been talking to some of the utilities in Australia who are very interested in being able to disconnect customers and put in a renewable energy system, yep. but they want something that is utility grade. Correct. Now, my understanding that Pixie's background really is 
in the utility market, particularly in the communication market. So yes. you've already got products that have that track record. We, we do, and uh, so we, we do go on all the way up to the production side, but it's not our target uh, business area in, in principle. So in principle, we like to say that we work at the grid edge, uh, closer to where problems need to be solved. Uh, which we which we see another another thing is a trend around the world is that you can't solve a problem on the central production site uh, in the same way as you can solve it close to the close to the consumer. So distributed solutions uh, enables fast adoption in in a, in a greater speed, um, and that doesn't mean there is no room for for larger energy storage solutions. But it's not the target area for what we are aiming to achieve. I like the way you described it as grid edge. So yeah, you're basically aug augmenting the grid yep. to provide that capacity that it might need for EV charging. Exactly. I, I came across another case study. Well, I was involved in doing some uh, uh, sort of field studies for it, which was for the New South Wales government. They wanted to make classrooms cooler because of yes. climate change. Exactly. And they realized that the, a lot of the schools, particularly in rural areas, just didn't have the electrical capacity to run air cons. And so they were looking for a battery storage inverter system to augment the grid. Yeah. And it was far cheaper than upgrading the grid. Absolutely, and cheaper and also the, the, the element of time. Yes. And, uh, we see it all around the world in, in the applications you describe and, and other places. It's not that it's technically challenging, but it's, it's the cost and the time element that will not enable this to happen in the near future. Right. So, um, and similar we see with, with your application as you just mentioned, with a school, for example, in, there can be applications where there are heat pumps that, that draw very high uh, peak currents uh, in combination with energy storage, batteries being a unique, uh, a unique product to solve that problem, to do peak shaving, to adopt more um, heat pumps as well, you know, for both cooling and heat. Yep, we're all about electrify everything. And exactly. Heat pumps are part of that mix, yep. and you're part of the solution where capacity is the problem. Correct, yeah. Correct. absolutely. Look, this is the Pixie little pixie box here. Uh, it's not this big, is it? No, it's only, <laughs> only the size of, 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 I think it's 25 by whatever, 10 centimeters. Half a loaf of bread. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, but it's a, it's a great product. It's proven in the market. You know, yeah. we, have, uh, we have seen tremendous growth and success uh, in, in, in uh, the markets that we have been entering. Uh, we see significant growth coming here in, in Australia. Uh, so it's a, it's a market we are very keen to uh, be part of. The other thing I've heard from the utility market is the serviceability of the product. Yes. Which is, um, it's hot swappable. Correct. Uh, it's not electrical work, it's plug and play. Yeah, my mom can do it. <laughs> Your mom can do it. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a big advantage, of course, and uh, it makes it safe and easy to, to, to operate and service. Uh, the service element or the cost element of service and support uh, is taken down significantly. Yeah. And, and also the time, mean time to repair. It's very quick because of the modularity and the scalability and flexibility of the system. Yeah. So that, that's a huge problem. I've also had clients who, uh, grid edge would be, I'd describe them as, who want more capacity uh, and they want uh, three phase power, but they've only got signal phase. Can you do that? Uh, we can. Um Rectify. Guess, we can rectify. Phase. You can do double. Yeah, you can do double conversion, but it's maybe not the best solution. Uh, we can do it, uh, but we might not have the best solution for that okay. in the short term. All right. Yeah. It's nice to know your limitations. Be, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's not a technical limitation, but it, I'm I'm not sure that's the most cost efficient way of doing it. Well, it might be cost efficient when you hear what the upgrade costs were. Like, yeah, uh, okay. So, so, you know, for instance, a, a, a job that I was involved in, the customer was quoted six hundred thousand yeah. dollars to have three phase power put on, and they had already single phase. Yeah. They, they actually wanted just a little bit more. Yeah. Not six hundred thousand dollars worth. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. And, and, and that could be possible if it's uh, part of the load, for example. If yes. you have selective loads that needs three phase. Yes. Then it's doable so because then the sizing of it exactly is more sensible. It was aircon and uh, door lifters. Correct. Three phase door lifters for their for farm property. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, that, 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 that could definitely be sold using our solution. So, but with, with double conversion, you know, so yeah. connect the single phase through the battery and then so it's a DC connected and then you do uh, inverter from there. Yes. Provide the critical loads with three phase. So ba basically, um, your DC bus and your battery is your pool that you can source or sink energy into. Yeah. And do it with it what you like. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's a, it's, a, it's a very good, flexible solution that allows for 
both scalability, uh, as in as you scale as you grow. Yeah. If you have future demands and needs, you can actually expand the system both within the cabinet or multiple of cabinets. And, and, and it gives you that flexibility of various features and functionalities that you can enable. It stacks what we say stack services uh, to participate in, in, in certain energy markets, for example. Uh, allowing you to get a better return on investment than just the basic of your yeah. units. Which is what you did uh, for the community battery. So correct. It's, correct. Yeah. So that's FCAS, and enabling FCAS as, as, as part of the, the product uh, features yeah. and, and allowing for our customers to have a better return on investment. How big can you go? Like, uh, we have, we have uh, deliveries today that goes into multi-megawatts. Wow. So and it works. It works very well. So, wow. And it's proven to be even competitive in that in that larger range yes. of capacities. So, which was not the initial intent when we started to develop the product. Yes. But it's proven to be a, a very dynamic, flexible solution, which the customers do like. I presume these are outdoor enclosures? These are full IP fifty five outdoor enclosures. Right. Yeah. So that works well. And we also have indoor Indoor solutions that can go into an indoor environment, uh, being a building, or into a container uh, where that is applicable. Yeah. Typically, low C rate uh, applications you can have where you have much more batteries relative to the power, and, uh, and, and then then they can fit into into containerized type of solution. Right. Cool. It's well, very interesting. Thanks for us, Kenneth. Thank you very it's much. Been great talking. Appreciate. To you. Nice <laughs> video. Thank you.